We've said it before on this channel and we'll say it again because, to be frank, it's one of our favorite facts. Mankind knows more about what's out there in the depths of space than we do about what's lurking at the bottom of Earth's own ocean. At last, after descending over 130 feet, they find what they've been searching for. Thank goodness then, four deep sea divers who explore down there and solve the mysteries for us. Good news, they're discovering new stuff every day. Bad news, some of it is terrifyingly odd. These are bizarre discoveries by deep sea divers. Number 15. Cancun Underwater Museum as you dive into the beautiful, clear blue waters off the coast of Cancun, Mexico, the last thing you might expect to encounter would be a large crowd of people standing on the ocean floor, covered in algae, feet covered in the sand of the seabed. You'd be forgiven for thinking you were stuck in a scene from the Planet of the Apes. But in fact, this scene is available to all visitors to the 43,000 square feet, or 4,000 meters squared, Cancun Underwater Museum or Musa. Divers or passengers aboard glass-bottomed boats are treated to the sight of more than 500 statues which depict a whole array of human life. A man lying in bed watches TV, crowds of the oppressed are captured in a moment of suffering, anger or reaching for help, a woman prays, a child sits alone in contemplation, and all at up to 26 feet or 8 meters below the surface. Overseen by British artist Jason Declares Taylor, art in a, a terrestrial environment and also in a subaquatic environment. The museum not only gives visitors a taste of contemporary art and the chance to observe local sea life, but it has an ecological message too. The sculptures are designed to remind visitors of the fragility of the ecosystems, and being made of pH neutral minerals help the recovery of the area's coral reefs, which are threatened with destruction. Next time you want to contemplate the fundamentals of the human experience through art, but surrounded by several hundred quintillion gallons of seawater, then this is the place to head. Like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the juicy topic. This photo captures the curious moment a deep sea diver stumbled upon a colossal anaconda in the depths of the ocean. Truly bizarre. Had the snake just fallen into the water, that would make sense. But curiously, the anaconda seemed very settled, showing no signs of struggling to breathe at all. The diver, a Swedish man by the name of Christian, says the snake, who he nicknamed Arthur, seemed oddly at peace with being underwater. Incredibly strange. What do you think? Is this an all-new species, or are snakes just better at coping underwater than we ever knew? Comment down below with the hashtag JuicyTopic, and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. With that said, let's keep things moving. Number 14. SS Gersopa Shipwreck as thrilling as discovering a shipwreck sounds, a lot of the time there's little more than rusting metal and maybe a few unfortunate sailors' bones lying around inside. Not so aboard the wreck of the SS Gersopa, a British ship which was torpedoed off the coast of Ireland by a German U-boat in 1941 at the height of World War II's naval showdown. This could be the largest ever known precious metal cargo recovered from the sea. In 2013, divers, at almost three miles, miles, 5 kilometers, below the surface, discovered that the Gersopa was holding 1,500 silver bars among her ruins, worth $40 million today. Some disputes began between Odyssey, the company who obtained the rights to salvage the wreck, and the British government, in whose waters it lies, about who should get all the silver. With Odyssey in the end agreeing to an 80% cut, finders keepers! Almost. All the same, without their expertise and advanced technology robotic equipment, the loot might have stayed on the ocean floor for good. But as it turns out, it's a record haul and a record depth. Not a bad way to make a living, if you're comfortable 5 kilometers below sea level. Number 13. Underwater Icicle The Icy Fingers of Death Sounds pretty bad, although in this case it's pretty unlikely to be pointing at you unless you're a deep-sea diver. 
Also known by the less terrifying name of brinicles, these strange formations are indeed brine icicles, formations of saltwater ejected from sea ice, but nevertheless with a sub-zero temperature. So that the salt water descends towards the ocean floor, they form a kind of icicle, a kind of salty stalactite surrounded by a sheath of ice. Once down there, though, passing sea urchins and small fish better watch out, as contact with a brinicle often means being trapped in a frozen prison and death. The underwater icicles form because seawater expels impurities, such as salt, when it freezes. This means that the water around the frozen sea ice becomes more saline, and therefore both denser and with a lower freezing temperature. So the water, filled with salt, which is expelled from the ice above, creates a small tunnel for itself, where the surrounding water does not freeze right away, and the icicle's higher density causes it to sink to the ocean floor. And so, we have the basic conditions for a brinicle. First observed by divers in the 1960s, they were filmed by the BBC in recent years, showing just how beautiful this amazing phenomenon truly is. That is, unless you happen to be an over-curious passing sea urchin. Number 12. Lion City, China's Atlantis Founded some 1,800 years ago, the city of Xicheng was once the thriving cultural, political, and economic center of Zhejiang province on China's eastern coast. Long known as Lion City, it has also become known as China's Atlantis after the Chinese communist government completely submerged the ancient city 60 years ago. The artificial lake Qiando was constructed as part of a project to dam the Xenon River and build a hydroelectric power station. The valley in which the ancient city lay was chosen for the dam lake, and the entirety of Lion City soon found itself under 130 feet, or 40 meters, of water. At last, after descending over 130 feet, they find what they've been searching for. So while the story of Xi Chang is perhaps not as mysterious as that of Atlantis, what lies within could not be more spectacular. A vast number of buildings and more than 300 arches displaying elaborate carvings from Han-era China and beyond are perfectly preserved beneath the still waters of the fake lake. And the modern Chinese government is hoping to increase tourism in the area with the building of an observation bridge and the introduction of diving tours. And why Lion City? Well, not because of any nautical lions roaming down there, but because the city once stood in the shadow of the Five Lion Mountain, which is now too submerged. That's one deep and strange lake. Number 11. Apollo Rocket Engines a furious race against time involving 400,000 Americans, including a handful of German rocket scientists captured from the Nazis during the Second World War, all working on the Apollo project to get a man on the moon back in the 1960s. Engineers chain-smoked, drank heavily, worked 80-hour weeks, and had all the associated heart attacks, ulcers, and breakdowns you might imagine with such a schedule. But in the end, they made it and beat the Soviet Union to the moon. And now one of the five engines that helped fire Saturn V has been recovered from the seabed where it landed more than 50 years ago. A heat exchanger and turbine manifold from Apollo 16. The most powerful rocket engine ever built, and one which many NASA scientists say would be impossible to build today, presumably due to early morning whiskey and cigarettes being seen as a little little outside of today's health and safety regulations, discarded its engines once the rocket hit around 5,000 miles per hour, 8,000 kilometers per hour, and they landed safely in the Atlantic Ocean, where they remained until a team led by Amazon's Jeff Bezos spotted one of the engines on a dive. After a complex operation, the huge, beat up, rusted lump of brutal rocketry power was extracted from the sea floor and is destined for a place in a museum after a little spit and polish. Number 10. Underwater River. Cenotes, 
deriving from the Mayan word sono, means sacred well, and were thought of as places of great spiritual importance to the people of the Yucatan, where some 6,000 of them can be found. They are formed when water slowly erodes the limestone bedrock common to the area, creating wells, sinkholes, and sometimes vast and astonishing underground caverns through which rivers flow. These were thought of as gates to the kingdom of the dead, and Mayans believed that part of the journey in the afterlife involved navigating these mysterious underground rivers. Luckily, nowadays you don't need to die to take a visit, as they have become popular tourist destinations for those visiting Mexico's Caribbean coast. Otherwise unavailable. As if the idea of river swimming through a vast underground cavern filled with the ghosts of dead Mayans weren't enough, the cenotes are also known for their halocline layers. That's the part where fresh water meets very salty water, usually about a third of the way down. And the interaction of these two kinds of water gives the otherwise crystal clear water a strange glowing milky aura, which is both surreal and dreamy, as well as the sensation of floating in air as the density changes, rising through the layers. It also smells pretty strongly of sulfur, so maybe pack an extra nose clip or two. Number 9. Galleon San Jose Shipwreck 17 billion in gold, silver, and gems just lying around unattended? Sounds like a get-rich-quick scheme that's a little too good to be true. And it is, since all the booty is trapped in a 300-year-old galleon lying on the sea floor off the coast of Colombia. A dispute between the Colombian government and a U.S. salvage company about who has the right to the loot has almost reached the level of animosity seen between the 18th century Spanish and their British enemies, whose warships fired upon the San Jose and sank it. For reasons that are probably only clear to the Spanish governors of 1708, they loaded the equivalent of one year's national GDP onto one ship, along with a cargo of precious wood, indigo, leather, cochineal, and all kinds of other valuables, and set the heavily laden vessel off sea, in waters teeming with British warships, who did not hesitate to open fire and put a serious dent in their arch-rival's economy. All your eggs? One basket? Come on. Number 8. Mariana Trench The Mariana Trench is a 1,550 mile or 2,500 kilometer long trench in the ocean floor, which sits around halfway between Japan and Papua New Guinea in the Pacific Ocean. And its deepest point, known as Challenger Deep, is the deepest place on the planet, at some 7 miles 11 kilometers below sea level. If you threw Mount Everest down there, its peak would still be a full 1.2 miles 2 kilometers below the surface. Needless to say, the ocean pressure down there is pretty high. It takes a pretty tough submarine to withstand it, and a pretty tough submariner too. And that's exactly what the current record holder, Victor Vescuvo, is. Uh, congratulations, Victor. Congratulations. Not satisfied with having climbed the tallest mountain on every single continent, he has now also been deeper than any human in history. What did he find at the bottom of the trench? All kinds of marine life, including snailfish, and all kinds of things that kind of look like blobs of just blobs. Oh, and he found a plastic bag down there, and a bunch of candy bar wrappers. So it's like your regular 7-Eleven, right around 11, I guess. Number 7. Antikythera Mechanism What's the oldest computer you've ever used? A first-gen MacBook? An Apple One? Some giant massive wires and switchboards which took up a whole building in the 60s and had a 3 megabyte hard drive? How about a computer which is more than 2,000 years old and was lost in the ocean by some of those smarter than smart ancient Greeks? Well, that's what the Antikythera mechanism is, named for the small port where it was discovered by sponge fishermen back in 1900. A shipwreck here in around 200 BC left a whole pile of treasure. But it was one strange clockwork mechanism which caught the attention above anything else. It's believed the mechanism was used to provide measurements of moon phases, planets, and to show the timing of eclipses as a navigational aid. 
and 3D scanning has revealed an astonishing level of mechanical complexity, unlike anything else known in the ancient world. Or indeed, before European advances in clockwork technology during the Renaissance, it remains one of the great enigmas of ancient history, and perhaps explains the incredible dominance of Greek culture of that era. I guess it didn't help them steer clear of those cliffs, though. Number 6. Goblin Shark The Goblin Shark the Goblin Shark. You know if an animal is called the Goblin something, it's not going to be a beauty. And the Goblin Shark isn't going to win any beauty contests. First described in 1898 by the American ichthyologist, that's a uh, fish guy, David Starr Jordan, the Goblin Shark has been spotted in all three major oceans of the world, and almost always in its darkest, most obscure corners, lingering around dark and gloomy depths of up to 4,300 feet or around 1,300 meters, sightings of this strange beast are extremely rare. The long snout is thought to be able to sense the weak electrical fields produced by other animals, and since they grow up to be as large as about 13 feet, 4 meters, smaller fish might want to, uh, keep an eye out for this alien-looking creature. Aside from its less than charming looks, the goblin shark is also the last of its particular family of sharks, and a pretty rare one at that. I'm almost beginning to feel a little sorry for the poor guy. Number 5. Blobfish Another aesthetically challenged creature of the deep. The blobfish, could it ever have been named anything else, looks like a sad, collapsed Mr. Potato Head, at least out of the water. For you see, in its natural habitat of the deep ocean around Australia and New Zealand, it gains its true, elegant, and majestic form. Or, well, still kind of an unhappy-looking potato. Related to the blobfish, which was recently voted the world's ugliest animal. <laughs> this transformation is due to decompression, when a blobfish is brought to the surface. Since its gelatinous flesh is slightly less dense than water, a system which allows it to bob along the seafloor without having to expend huge amounts of energy, maintaining a more solid form at such pressure. The sad news is that the blobfish might have a good reason to look the way it does, since numbers are dwindling due to habitat destruction and accidentally being caught up in nets thrown down by deep-sea trawlermen, who presumably are looking for something a smidgen easier on the eye. And, to add insult to injury, the British Ugly Animal Preservation Act voted the endangered blobfish the Earth's most hideous species. Talk about kicking a blob when he's down. Still, take a look at that face. Evolution, were you drunk? Number 4. Vampire Squid Joining our contingent of sea-dwelling superfreaks is the Vampire Squid, or at least, that's what we call this guy for short. His full taxonomical name, in Latin, is Vampirotuthis infernalis, meaning Vampire Squid from Hell. As though a regular Vampire Squid from plain old Earth wasn't terrifying enough. Vampire Squid are typically observed at depths with very low levels of oxygen. First described in 1903 by German toothologist, you guessed it, a squid guy, Carl Chun, it was originally classed as a kind of octopus, before being moved over to the squid family. The truth about this H.P. Lovecraft monster of your nightmares is that beyond its devilish appearance of red eyes, black flesh, and Dracula-style webbed cloak, it's really a pretty harmless little fellow feeding on floating sea detritus rather than sucking the blood directly from the eyeballs of its victims while using its sucker to grapple onto their faces. Or so it would have you believe. Go take a swim with them and let me know how it goes. Number 3. Sarcastic Fringe Heads the sarcastic fringe head should have been named the get the hell off my land before I whoop your behind fringe head, since these big mouthed fish are among the most belligerent creatures in the sea. Minding your own business, taking a stroll along the sea floor, you find yourself in the front yard of a sarcastic fringe head's territory, and boom, he's all up in your grill. These guys will fight anything, including each other, in what looks like one long weird kiss. 
So maybe the Chuck Norris of the ocean has a sensitive side too. The kiss is really a means for the males to establish dominance, and the one with the biggest mouth wins. And they certainly have big mouths, up to four times the size when open compared to when closed. The big guys scare off the small guys and get the pick of the females when it comes to mating. A world where the angry big mouth always wins. Remind you of any other species? Living in the Pacific Ocean, off the coast of California, they are found at around 70 meters, or 230 feet, below the surface. So next time you go for a deep sea dive and come back up with a black eye, you'll know who's to blame. Number 2. Underwater Temple Garden Bali Photographs of Tamanpura, that's Temple Garden in Indonesian, sparked some wild rumors on the internet some years ago that another underwater Atlantis of the East had been found. An astonishing and wonderful array of submerged statues from the Balinese Hindu temple were at first believed to have been an ancient archaeological site. However, the Australian Chris Brown revealed that the garden was his own creation, and that the objective was to create a conservation site for the regrowth of local reefs, as well as bringing tourism to the area in a way which would not damage the ecosystem. The fantastic statues of Buddha, Ganesha, and other deities, which sit at 30 meters or 100 feet below the surface of the ocean, are slowly being colonized by all forms of coral native to the area, as well as keeping alive some of the traditions of Indonesian spirituality, albeit way down under the sea. The reef garden now offers a section at the shallower depth for less experienced divers. And while it's not quite an ancient lost city, it's doing a great job for conservation and sure as heck is prettier than a blobfish. Number 1. The Ship of Gold Disaster! Shipwrecked off the coast of the Carolinas, the SS Central America sank to the murky depths, dragging with her some 425 souls to Davy Jones's locker. Back in September 1857, the ship was sailing from the port of Colon in Panama, and its destination was New York City. Aside from carrying the most unfortunate crew and passengers, it was on an emergency rescue mission for the U.S. economy. The Panic of 1857 was an economic crash which followed the collapse of the Ohio Life Insurance and Trust Company, and the SS Central America was sent with 10 tons of gold in its hold. Back in the days when all you needed to fix an economy was a literal boatload of solid gold, worth, in today's money, around 300 million. The economy was to be saved, but after a stop in Havana, Cuba, the weather decided it had another plan for the ship, and it was lost in a ferocious hurricane. Soon, the wreck became legend, known as the Ship of Gold. After its sparkling cargo, all of which had been prospected during the California Gold Rush. Fast forward to 1988, and an American team recovered the wreck, netting the group's leader, Tommy Gregory Thompson, some 52 million in sales from the salvage. One of the ingots was named Eureka, probably due to it being what the diver would have screamed into the water when he saw its 80 pound or 35 kilo form laying in front of him all covered in seaweed and fish and stuff. Thompson, however, wasn't content with the cool 52 million he made himself and absconded with a large chunk of his investor's share of the profits too, which he successfully hid from investigators after he was caught in 2015. 153 survivors, mainly women and children, did make it off the ship, although there was no record whether any of them managed to sneak a couple of bars of gleaming gold into their lifeboats or not. Would you be willing to dive deep beneath the waves to discover the treasures of an ancient shipwreck? Have you ever fished anything from your local pond as weird and wonderful as a blobfish? Make sure to let us know in the comments. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!